Hiya fam, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's another one of these pitch meetings in the MCU-verse. Which one, Dan? We're on to Black Widow. Oh, yay. <laughs> okay. This ought to answer some questions and get us back on plot points here. Eh, yeah, we'll see. Never mind. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we could do a Black Widow movie. Oh. That's, did you not see Avengers Endgame? Cause I have terrible <laughs> views. No, I did see that movie actually. Okay. Yeah, see, I figure we could set the movie a couple of years in the past, you know, when it would have made more sense to make it. Oh yeah, why did we wait so long to do this? Well, remember that whole leaked email situation with the old Marvel Studios head Ike Perlmutter where he was like, female-led superhero movies don't make money and he listed a bunch of examples. Shh, nope, nope, no. stop. Okay. But then Wonder Woman was a success, so I was asked to take a look at our female character roster again. Stop. Stop talking. Oh, sorry, are we not saying that out loud? We're, just, we're gonna take that again, okay? Why did it take us so long to do this? I don't know. <laughs> we're enough. Better late than never, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about the movie. Well, I figure we could get more grounded with the Black Widow movie, you know? Yeah, we're gonna do a more grounded movie about the lady who jumped off a cliff on planet Vormir after a red-faced war criminal who's now a space ghost explained that that was the only way to get her hands on the magic rock she wanted before a muscle-bound purple alien got it and completed his power glove. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I love it. <laughs> well, great. So I figure we could have this whole big marketing campaign where ScarJo is like, you think you know Black Scar Widow? Jo. Think again. So we're going to learn a bunch of new stuff about her? Like, how does she get that vest that she wears in Infinity War? Oh, people love retroactively learning how characters they know got certain pieces of clothing we've seen them wear. Oh, I certainly <laughs> hope they do, sir, because we've been really leaning into that for the past five years or so. We have, yeah. We're also really? going to shed some new light on the character. Like, for example, did you know she went on a little adventure between Civil War and Infinity War. Oh, neat. Yeah, so it turns out when Natasha was a kid, she had like a fake family in Ohio, but they were actually Russian operatives living undercover. Okay. Ooh. And then we're gonna jump forward in time and Natasha's on the run from General Ross because of the Sokovia Accords. He's from some of the other movies. <laughs> he is. Yeah. It's all connected. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So she heads to the safe house in Norway and unknowingly picks up a little box of vials of antidote. An antidote? Yeah, see, it turns out her fake sister Yelena was also a widow operative being kept controlled by this place called the Red Room, right? Right. And she ended up coming in contact with this stuff called the Red Dust, which freed her from her mind control agent. Ah, gotcha. So Natasha's Ooh. unknowingly driving with this stuff and suddenly a massive explosive hits her car and flips it a bunch of times. Oh my god, she is she survived? okay? Yeah, I mean, she's a superhero, right? Yeah, but that sounds like something that would probably kill a non superhero. So she's not really being. super. And Natasha doesn't have superpowers. Oh uh, yeah, whoops, whoopsie. <laughs> okay, so to be honest, now that I think of it, there are several several scenes in this movie where as a non-superpowered individual she should definitely be killed but oh. she's not gonna it would be better story-wise if she didn't die yeah because we already know when she dies anyway so then she's gonna get attacked by this villain called taskmaster oh people love that character very cool mimicking capabilities entertaining personality yeah so i figure we could do like a deadpool kind of thing <laughs> yeah bring a character that people love to the big screen in an enjoyable way sure uh no i meant like a deadpool in x-men origins wolverine oh, kind no. of thing oh Oh, turn the character into a mind-controlled killing machine with no speaking lines or personality traits. Yeah, that works too. Great. So then what happens? <laughs> well, Natasha escapes with the vials and goes to see her fake sister and they start fighting when they see each other. Why? Because it's been a couple of minutes since the last action scene. Gotcha. And so Natasha finds out that this bad Russian guy, Drakov, who she thought she killed years ago, is actually still alive and still running the Red Room. Okay. And by the way, I was thinking we could get Ray Winstone to play him. Oh, he's great. Can he do a Russian accent? Doesn't matter. It matters a little. <laughs> nope. So then they realize they need to break their fake father Alexi out of jail because he probably knows where the Red Room is. All right. So then these guards fire hundreds of bullets at Yelena who's in a helicopter and Natasha jumps down to help her dad. Very exciting. So then they all manage to fly away just as an avalanche is just destroying the prison. Well, well, thank God the hundreds of bullets didn't affect the helicopter yes, in any way. Yeah, it worked out great. So I guess a bunch of people are probably killed in that avalanche, huh? Were they all bad guys? Uh, yeah. You sure? I'm sure some of those guards were just people working there to try to feed their families. Uh, sir, we're on to the next scene, so don't worry about that. It's dark. Okay. So it turns out Alexi doesn't actually know where the Red Room is, so they have to go see their fake mother, Melina. Okay, sure. And it turns out she's still working for the Red Room, but then her and Natasha have a heart-to-heart, -heart, and that seems to change everything for her. So what do they do? Oh, well, they secretly use those face mask things to swap appearances. Well, why do they switch appearances? Well, because this way Natasha can get close to Drakov. Does that work? 
work. Now, he sees right through the disguise and pulls the mask off pretty oh, wow. much immediately. <laughs> right, so why do okay. they swap faces? Well, because Melina's the one who designed the cells in the Red Room, so she's able to open them up. Do you think maybe it might have been easier to just explain to Natasha how to open the cell instead of having her impersonate a woman she hasn't seen in several decades? Maybe, but so now Natasha <laughs> has to go up against Drakov and Taskmaster, who we're going to reveal is Drakov's daughter. Oh. Okay. No, see, this is kind of a big deal because Natasha always assumed she killed her when she was a little girl as kind of intentional collateral damage when killing Drakov. Natasha intentionally killed a child? Ooh, well, the child didn't really die, so morally we're all good. Uh, so then we're going to flash back to Melina explaining to Natasha that you can't actually <laughs> hurt Drakov. Why? Because he implemented a pheromone blocker in all the widows, so if you can smell him, you can't hurt him. What? It's oh. basic science, sir. If you can smell him, you can't fire a gun at him. Is that basic science? It Robot is, yeah, because that's why I wrote that in here. So Natasha has to hold her breath? No, because see, Melina explains that's not enough. You gotta sever a nerve right here. Couldn't she just kind of stand on the other side of the room far away from him, fire a gun from there? Nope. But probably, though. Pheromones. Oh, very far <laughs> pheromones. So it's gonna be tough for her to hurt him, huh? Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, she smashes her face on a table, and that severs the nerve. Oh, uh, surgical head smashing is tight. But so then Drake okay. manages to to bring in all the brainwashed widows and they start attacking Natasha. Oh no. But then Yelena uses the antidote on all of them and all their free will comes back. Oh, very nice of her. And Melina blows up a main engine of the Red Room sky base so the whole thing starts to fall. Uh oh. Yeah, and then Yelena blows up the plane that Drakov was trying to escape on. And she was able to do that despite the pheromones? Sure, and so then Black Widow <laughs> dives after her as she plummets towards Earth but Taskmaster starts attacking again. And not one piece of the massive actively crumbling sky base lands on them. That's what we're going with. So then they land, but Natasha manages to use the antidote on Taskmaster, and so everything's great now. So nobody died in the massive collapse? Yeah, just every single one of the bad characters and not a single one of the good or <laughs> redeemed characters. Oh, well, great. So then instead of escaping with her family, Natasha decides to stay behind and be captured by General Ross. Oh, yeah, she can't go with her family. She's got to be in a couple of other movies. So then two weeks yeah. later, she meets up with her friend who got her a Quinjet. Wait, wasn't she just captured by Ross? What happened there? I don't know. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> and then during right the credits, then. we're going to have this scene where Yelena is at Natasha's grave, and this character, Contessa Valentina, shows up with a mission for her. What's the mission? Sign up for Disney+. Plus. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be very exciting. People are going to be like, who is this character? It's going to be this big reveal. Oh, that's going to be a big reveal. Really add a lot to the end credits, unless we decide to reveal it in a streaming show first. Mm. What? And you did, didn't yep. you? Yep. Yep. All right. Maybe I should have watched it before. <laughs> uh, lessons learned. It's always brilliant the way he finds these plot holes. Oh, there, there's plenty to find there. I actually did see this one. I just wanted to see what was going on with the storyline, just, just to know more about Black Widow. And really, it wasn't the, the best use of your time, I'll say that. You, know, you learn a little bit about her family, but realistically, the only thing it does is it introduces her sister and it introduces the other character there, who they talk about in Disney Plus shows. And then you end up seeing them later on too, like the sister shows up in Hawkeye. Mm. And the other girl, the other woman, she's in Falcon and Winter Soldier, like they said there at the end. Yeah, I saw. But realistically, nothing else in that movie matters to the MCU, besides introducing those characters. What do they call that type of movie? I think it's called like an inner quell. Whatever. That's, that, I've heard this term recently. It's, it's, it's exactly what currently Alien Romulus is. Mm -hmm because it's a movie that takes place in between two timelines. Mm -hmm. Black Widow takes place after, was it after? I think they said after Civil War. Takes place after Civil War, but before Infinity War. Right. So you're answering some questions in there. They call that like, they call that an inner quell, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's like a movie that takes place in between two timelines of two other movies. Yeah. Alien Romulus, in the same way, just to make the point here, takes place in between Alien and Alien. Right. I don't know. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I know okay. what you're talking about. In a way, it was kind of a character origin story for Black Widow is all it really was. True. Now, Grant, you know, because every other hero that we saw, they had their big origin movie where, we, you know, we see Tony Stark develop his Iron Man suit. We see, you know, Bruce Banner gain his Hulk powers. You see Thor get thrown out of Asgard and have to deal with all that mess. This was her origin story because she just kind of shows up. In one of the in the Iron Man too, when we never really get her background until this film. Does that mean we can expect a Hawkeye story at some point? I don't know. I don't know if they'll do it. I don't know. If, I don't know if there's a need for them to do it because they kind of passed off the torch to somebody else in the in the series. But well, that's not fair. So she dies, mm -hmm. and then she still gets an origin story. 
But Hawkeye, who's still alive here, who had quite an interesting tale, especially in Endgame, mm-hmm. doesn't get an origin story. All right, because at some point he meets up with Natasha Romanoff, right? Yeah. You would think that he kind of deserves that. And I know that has nothing to do with Black Widow, folks, but still. Well, I think it kind of goes back to what they're saying, too, about the whole debate about, you know, can you make a, a female-led superhero film and make it work? Oh, is this so that's where this is going. Okay. We only wanted to focus on girl power from here on out. We had no time for you, Hawkeye. Sorry. And really, in a way, it is because it is all about Black Widow and her sister throughout the majority of the film. Okay. You know, it, it's them out there, you know, kicking ass and taking names, but it's... As a film, it's just not... You don't have the same stakes that you do in some of the other Marvel films. They're not really superheroes, so... And as, Yeah, exactly right. As they pointed out, they're not superheroes. They're just ordinary people. So basically, it's just a, a more like a spy thriller than anything, set in the MCU. Oh, so good. And it's, yeah. I think I like the idea of like calling them out on the, fer- on the whole pheromone thing here. Yeah. And like she could smash her head on the table, wow, brush it off, and then do what she needs to do. But the other girl, you know... Makes practically stands in front of an explosion. Who doesn't die again, by the way? Mm-hmm. And she could do that to him, but well, like, like the best one he made though is like, why don't you stay on the other side of the room and shoot him if it's a pheromone problem? Because you're not gonna smell him from 20 feet away. No, exactly. <laughs> Your pheromones are not that potent. <laughs> no, so, not through some damn glass or whatever. So probably that thing because these girls like to get close to their prey. So they are well versed in hand-to-hand combat. I'll say that. Yeah. So I can kind of see that, but it felt. Very, very similar to like Dick Jones and RoboCop to me. Yeah. Because of the directive he put in there, you can't, you can't detain an OCP officer. Get that built-in failsafe. Yeah. Yeah. So he had the same thing there. So I imagine they took that one from that. Probably they could have done something smarter there, like put a microchip in her or something. Don't, don't use pheromones for God's sake. (laughs) Right. All in all, another successful pitch meeting in my opinion. Yes. Yes. And folks, I think that's where we're gonna where we're gonna end things here. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, check us out on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. Also, guys, if you feel like supporting this channel even further, consider joining up and becoming a member, guys. It's not required, and Dan certainly doesn't recommend it. Join up. (laughs) (laughs) But we'd love to have you guys anyway. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks, and I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. (laughs) 